campaigns to attracting the millennial generation as a gaming patron. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your companies are doing? I'll start with you, Mr. Miller. Sure, I think that um, people are concerned about the manufacturing side, I'm not. There's a lot of talent in this room, talent we partner with, uh, that are coming up with great innovations. We all know what the, the issue is. Um, the, the customers of today are more social. You know, they interact, they're gatherers. They are not set on their itineraries, which is why I'm building parks and outdoor environments because I can't tell them what to do. And the manufacturers can't tell them what products to play. We have to adapt to the customer. Las Vegas and other resort markets have been great at that. So what's, what are we doing? Um, we have a table product that's being tested at Mirage and at MGM right now that uh, you can get on Facebook, uh, you can watch one of your games, you can play fantasy sports, and oh, by the way, you can, you can gamble a little bit. Um, and uh, the manufacturers are working on products that create these social environments. And we're working to reconfigure casino floors to accommodate um, that very fact. And we're working with the major manufacturers about the floors of the future. And uh, we incubated a company called My Vegas, which today is a social game, which about a million, million of you a day play, thank you very much, um, for hours a day. And it's a great customer acquisition tool. And uh, we're looking at fantasy sports, and we're looking at a variety of other ways to interact with the customer. The days of just changing the belly glass of a machine are obviously over. Um, but um, the days of getting back to our roots um, are not. You know, people were going back to a lot of the great product you'll see on this floor are, are brands that we grew up loving. And now they're, we haven't thought about them in a while and they're back. And that's great for someone that's in his 50s. Um, so I think it's a combination of becoming social, adapting to the fact that uh, the gamers like skill-based games, and as close as we can get to that with, through compliance, the better. The environment, the social environments are critical, and um, the manufacturers and the operators have to work together on this, because it's nobody's uh, sole responsibility. Um, otherwise, we're gonna be uh, irrelevant down the road, and none of us want that. Of course, that begs the age-old question that's probably been asked at every G2E setting like this one over the years, which is, are the regulators nimble enough to handle the evolving demands of an ever uh, you know, complex industry? Uh, you know, um, there are a lot of regulars that out, out here in the audience, and I love you all. <laughs> as, as someone that's in a privileged industry, which means I have the privilege of being regulated by everybody and second-guessed by more. Um, <laughs> I, I think the, I, my observation is the regulatory environments are evolving now more rapidly than they have in a long time. And there's a, a recognition amongst U.S. regulators that uh, we're part of a global business um, and that no two jurisdictions have to be identical. Um, they have to be cooperative and work together. And that uh, we're finding in my home state here in Nevada and many other states a great willingness to adapt, um, more so than I have seen in the last 30 years. So I'm, I'm actually quite uh, bullish on regulatory form, reform being as robust as it, it, it can possibly be, but adaptive. Okay. Jim, what do you think about millennials as gamblers and regulators? Well, I, I think what's interesting is I certainly concur with Jim's comments, but um, I look at it, each market has its own individual characteristics. And if we look at, say, our property in Tampa, and you know, we're very fortunate, obviously, because of the monopoly we have in that particular part of the state. And that's all about gaming. You know, that is $40 million going in on a Saturday night. And it's one thing, it's casino, and it's casino, and it's casino. But then you look at some of the other different markets, say, like Las Vegas, where it's about entertainment. So you're, you're needing to create, I believe, you know, products and entertainment decisions based upon the markets you're in. I think the concern the industry should have is, in the regional markets, where you're in a competitive environment, there's incredibly high tax rates, and the model was built on a casino, you know, ROI. And so you don't have the capital to create the true entertainment amenities that can potentially attract, you know, the younger individuals. And we're very fortunate because 
one of the things we navigate through is, frankly, sometimes we think our brand goes too young. You know, there's not a lot of discretionary income that's coming from a 21 to 30 year old, to say the least. Um, but certainly if we can market to those individuals that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, then obviously that creates a better ROI. Um, you know, I'll concur once again with Jim. Certainly, you know, I, I received one of the first key licenses in New Jersey, you know, and, and I remember that process of how challenging that was back in 1980 to what it is today. And I think um, without question, overall, there's a much more working hand-in-hand -hand relationship with the regulatory authorities not just on a state level, but frankly, in other countries. You know, I just came back from Asia and sitting with representatives, you know, senior um, government officials in Vietnam, Cambodia, places like this. And there is definitely a, an acknowledgement of, what, of the success that frankly that's happened in Singapore from a regulatory standpoint. Certainly we know the dollars that are happening in Macau are, are legendary, but I think you can have that combination um, to create in a regulatory environment where we don't lose the integrity. You know, people say, Jim, what's the most important thing to you as an individual? Honesty and integrity. You know, I, we've been doing this too long, and people that are trying to get, a, get ahead, what I refer to as the make the quick buck, that's an immediate diversion for myself and for our organizations. And as you look at those countries, regulators coming here to the United States, um, obviously Nevada, you know, the key states that have been around for a long time, I think those relationships are very important.